good morning, everyone. Our Sundays have now come indoors because it's a little chilly outside. Today, we're going to put together a short practice that you can do, you know, either on a Sunday morning or weekday morning, you know, maybe before work, you want to uh, add, add a little bit of movement to your body, get yourself nice and warm um, before your day starts. This would be a good practice to, to incorporate into your daily routine. So let's come to a comfortable seated position. Cross-legged is fine. If you want to sit in more of a smooth fasten up position with the legs a little bit wider, or a little bit narrower, allow the spine to lengthen, soften the shoulders, create a length in the neck or spine. Kind of just rest yourself here. Try not to lean too much forward. Try not to lean back too much, but instead create a nice foundation for your hips. And then from here, you can soften your gaze or close your eyes. You can take a few moments to kind of settle into your breath. Nice deep inhale, slow, gentle exhale. Coming to awareness of breath here. So as you breathe in, be aware that you are breathing in. As you breathe out, aware that you are breathing out. Start to focus your attention more deeply more consciously into the inner workings of the body. So however your evening was spent, or perhaps if you're practicing with me in this class, recorded class later in the day, however your day went, let all of that go. Come back to the deep inhale. And slow exhale. One last deep breath in. And slow breath out. And you can come back to your natural pattern of breath. Maybe a little shorter, a little shallower a little faster or not. Perhaps your breath stays long and steady and deep. Then we'll bring the palms together at the center of the heart, symbolizing that union of body, of mind, and of spirit. From here, we'll draw another, another breath in to prepare for Om. Inhale. And as we exhale completely, let's release the hands. Let's blink the eyes open. Inhale, roll the shoulders up, back, and down. And so for today's practice, we are going to be needing at least one block. So if you have a yoga block around you, you're going to need for at least one of those. Two, if you feel like you might be a little bit tight. Um, I'll also give the option to use a yoga wheel. If you have one at home, I know some of you have some, so we'll have that option as well. So we're going to start kind of bringing the yoga block somewhere uh, around the middle of the back. And we're gonna just go ahead and place it, lay back onto the block, and you're gonna place it at its lowest angle, so the flattest position of the block. Then allow your head to kind of hang back. Maybe the top of the head can rest on the floor. Roll the shoulders back and down, and you can lengthen your legs, or you can keep your knees bent. So just allow yourself a moment here to create a little bit of expansion through the rib cage, through the upper chest. Make sure that the block is in a place that feels comfortable for you. And you can relax your arms here, kind of like Shavasana, but a little bit more engagement in the legs. Don't worry about pointing or flexing your feet. Just kind of roll the thighs in towards each other. So we're creating this sense of openness and lift through the rib cage, And then we are allowing the shoulders to kind of open back. So this is kind of what we call it the first level of our back bending journey. If this in and of itself feels really uncomfortable for you, you can also roll up a towel or a blanket or use a cushion to kind of make it a little bit more soft. But we are going to try and expand in this position a little bit more. So just take a few breaths, press into it. 
This is a great way to open the expansion of the lungs. It's a great way to start to begin to move into our back bending. So soften your breath, check in with the body, see if there's any tension in the shoulders or in the hips or in the legs. And just like I said before, try not to let your toes flop out to the side like you would in Shavasana, but instead roll the inner thighs in towards each other and notice as your legs kind of go parallel, your feet go parallel, relax your toes. Steady your breath. Back bending can be a little triggering for our nervous system. So if you start feeling yourself kind of going into a little freak out stage, that's totally normal. Just be here for a few more breaths if you can. Surrender to what you find without fighting with your body. Let the breath be steady. So long exhales. Good. One more breath. Inhale. Long exhale. Make that exhale as long as possible. Letting all the air out of the lungs. Letting your nervous system know it's okay. You're fine. It's good. And then from there, when your next inhale, go ahead and bend your knees. Place the hands behind the head so you can interlace your fingers and help your head kind of come up for a moment. Just tuck the chin in, look towards your knees, the, the elbows kind of open out a little bit, shoulders back. And again, depending on your block, I have these cork blocks that are a little bit tough. You can always put a little cushion on top. From here, reach forward, grab a hold of your thighs or your legs, use your core muscles, chin tucks in like a sit up, inhale, sit yourself up nice and slow. Good. And then from here, we're going to go ahead and grab the knees, give your back a little bit of a round, forehead to the knees, and just kind of release that for a moment. So you're going to ask yourself at this point, was that enough for me? Do I need to go a little deeper? Should I just repeat what we just did or just change it up and use something completely different like, like a cushion? If you wanted to add on and see if you can find a little bit more opening in your back, you're going to take that block and flip it so that it's on the middle side. So flattest version of the block is here. The middle side of the version of the block and then the high. So we're going to try to work through all of those. So middle uh, edge of the block, we're going to go ahead and place it same position right above kind of the ribs, the kidney area. So right above there, kind of see how that feels and kind of feel your way through. If this is okay, you can take your hands behind your head and drop your head back. Right. Now it's possible the top of your head may not touch the block here. It's possible that the top of your head hangs. So if that's the case, you want to keep your hands behind your head or on top of your head and to help support it. Another option is to grab like a pillow or another block and allow that block to support your head. So if you have two blocks, you would bring the other one so that way you can rest your head there. Try not to feel any tension or tightness in your neck here. So you want to relax your neck completely. Good. I'm going to check on the boys, see how they're doing. Oh, you got Duke. Perfect. Lay your head on Duke. There you go. See, Duke is helpful. All right. So now, same as before, you want to feel that expansion in the chest and in the lungs. You can extend your leg if that's comfortable, or you can keep your knees bent. Try not to elevate your hips, but instead let your hips come down, feel the rib cage opening, and just be here. Again, back bending is really uncomfortable. It triggers a lot of emotion, a lot of sensation, and a lot of feelings from us. If you want, you can close your eyes, or you can gaze the tip of your nose, or even look back towards the floor. Whatever you decide to do with your gaze, keep it steady. So try not to look around. Just find one point of focus. And just notice where it is that you're feeling this. Is it simply only in the place where the block is touching with your body? Could be. That's the only place you feel this. It could be in your lower back. It could be in the front of your body, perhaps your rib cage or your abdomen. So allow yourself to feel the sensations without judgment. Mm -hmm. Let go of any need to adjust or change. But instead, surrender. What does it feel like when we let go? When we find ourselves in a difficult position and we let go? 
let go of the need to control, let go of the need to change it up or create something different. But instead, just be what happens when we just are. Will we just be here with the discomfort? And maybe it's not that uncomfortable for you. Maybe for you it feels nice and expansive and open. Then enjoy that as well. That's equal, valid. Enjoy whatever it comes up for you today. And remember, we're just trying to warm up the body here. We're just trying to feel through this journey of back bending. Let's do one more deep inhale. Slow exhale, let that exhale take forever, releasing all the breath out. And with the next in-breath, we're going to bow the knees. We're going to bring the hands behind the head like we did before. Use your arms to help lift your chin up, look towards your knees or your thighs. Don't mind the dog in front of the camera. She'll move. Soften the shoulders a bit here. Good. And then just like the sit up again, you're going to use your hands to bring it to your thighs. You can use your arms to pull you, or you can use your core or a little bit of both. And slowly ooze it up. Take your time. Give those knees a nice squeeze, a nice hug. And press out through the back like cat pose. You want to press that part of your back that was on the block. Push it back as far back as you can away from you to kind of counter that position. Forehead to the knees, shoulders relaxed, away from the ears, belly drawn in. And exhale, slowly let it go. Good. So we're going to go ahead and change the block up and we're going to now use it to open up the lower back or the hips. So lay all the way onto the back, lowest level of the block once more, lift the hips and let it sit your feet right. Now. On the top of the hip. All right. Okay. Being here today, we got lots of doubts. All right, you guys know how it is. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna let the sacrum. So the sacrum is that space below your waist but above your glutes. So place that there. Sorry, we're bringing it to move out the way. All right. From here, relax the shoulders, relax the arms, and if it's comfortable for you, straighten the legs. You can always keep those knees bent and you can always kind of keep the legs relaxed. But just as before, don't let your feet flop out to the side. So engage the inner thighs. So roll the inner thighs in, lift the rib cage, and just take some breaths here. Arms can be down on the floor, palms up, or feels good. Take them over your head and reach the fingertips high up towards above your head. So that's another option for you. You can kind of lengthen in both directions. And just notice here, after the expansion we created in the upper back, this we're trying to focus more in the hip flexors and in the lower back a little bit. You shouldn't feel any pinching here. If you're starting to feel a little pinching, soften your knees or even bend your knees a little bit. Plant your feet on the floor. So you want to feel that there's no pinching in your lower back. And let's stay here. Each inhale kind of creates a little bit of length through the body. Each exhale creates a sense of softness and ease as we move the breath through and let that exhale be long and steady. Again, inhale. Feel the body expanding. You want to kind of focus your awareness here in the front of the hip flexors, the front of the pelvis, the lower abdomen, that whole long front body. Exhale, long and steady, softly melting into the earth. One more breath, inhale. And exhale. If your arms are up over your head, let's bring them back down to other sides of the body. Bend the knees. Take a moment to flatten your feet on the floor. Create a little bit of a curl under through the tailbone. Lift the hips and let's remove the block. Lower the hips back down. And let's bring the knees into the chest. Give yourself a nice squeeze. Maybe a little rolling side to side. You can hold on to the knees or the shins. You can even wrap the arms around your legs. Make it a little tighter. 
whatever feels good for you. You can go around in circles, giving the lower back a little massage. So if you found that to be pretty challenging for you, and that was as much challenge as you want to give your practice today, feel free to repeat what we just did. Second option is to ele elevate the block to that second level, so that middle level like we did before. So please feet planted on the floor, inhale, elevate the hips like you're going into bridge, and then slide that block right at the sacrum, same spot as before. It's that kind of bony part of the lower back, below the lower waist, and above the glutes. So position yourself comfortably there. Once your tailbone is positioned, and once your hips are feeling supported, remember you can always stay here with the knees bent, the feet flat on the floor, the arms by your side, or the arms up overhead. Second option, if you so want to try it, is you can try extending one leg and then the other. And you don't want to bring your thighs together. Just roll them in towards each other. So it's okay if your legs are apart. You don't worry about flexing your feet or pointing your feet. Just let your feet be however they are comfortably and roll, roll those inner thighs inwards. So the knees are pointing straight up to the ceiling. From here, you don't want to feel any tension in your lower back. Again, lift the rib cage, relax the shoulders, and let the arms reach up or down, whichever is comfortable for you. And once more, keep that focus on your breath. So whatever level of discomfort you come across, whatever type of challenge this pose allows you to feel. Now the challenge could be physical, Indeed, your body is feeling, you know, a sense of strain and stress. The challenge could be mental. You know, you don't love this. You hate this. It sucks. You feel terrible. I don't want to be in here. That, that's a mental challenge that you're going through. Your challenge could be emotional. So whatever that challenge is for you today, love it. You need to feel it, so feel it. Don't judge it. Don't make it bad or good or necessary or useless, just let it be. Allow the breath to take center stage of your awareness. Inhaling deeply. Exhaling completely. If you start to feel sharp pain, clearly you want to come out of the asana. So if sharp pain means your body red light, you need to listen to that discomfort, annoyance, that is not sharp pain. That we can work with. That is our teacher, that is our lesson. Couple more breaths here. Exhale completely. One more inhale, try to relax the legs and glutes. Don't tense through your glutes, soften there, inhale. And exhale. Long, soft release of breath. If your arms are up over your head, let's bring them back down by your side. Bend one knee and then the other, and take a moment to readjust your shoulders, your head, just allow yourselves a moment here. From here, you're gonna kind of tuck the toes under and then press the hips up, remove the block and lay all the way back down. Come all the way back down to your lower back. And then from there, bring the knees into the chest. Be kind, be gentle as you move the knees around. Give the lower back a little massage and give yourself a gentle squeeze. Say thank you to your body and your spine and your back. Always practicing with a sense of ease, of gratitude, and deep awareness. We're going to continue with some back bends, but first we're going to go into some twists. So let's move the block off to the side. Keep the knees hugged in. And then you're going to open your arms like a T, palms facing down. So with your knees hugged in towards your chest, try to drop them to the left. Just drop your knees as far to the left as comfortable. Maybe your left thigh comes down, and if it doesn't, you can, whoops, you can always grab that block and place it so that your leg has somewhere to rest, your left thigh. So that's an option for you as well. If it comes all the way down to the floor and you don't need the block, just move it off to the side. All right, and then once your legs are down, whether on the block or on the floor, just take a gaze over to the right. 
Just feel all of the work you just did in your spine kind of integrating into the rest of your body. Let the twist happen naturally here. And there's a sense of softness, let the heels touch. Let the right leg rest gently on top of the left leg. So don't have your knees apart, but instead gently together. And if the arm for the T is too much, you can always bend your elbows and take your hands to your waist or to your side, or even down on the floor. You get to choose here how deep or not so deep you come into this asana. Soften your right shoulder, so the one where you're gazing towards the right, that right shoulder needs to soften down. Try not to keep it too elevated. It may stay elevated depending on your flexibility, but just softly breathe into that right shoulder. Each exhale lets it come down a little closer to the earth. If your elbows are up off the floor, try to relax the elbows down. Try to bring that right ear down. And just like before, find one point of focus. Could be towards the tip of the nose or finding a spot on your wall or room. Or it could just simply be with your eyes closed and your attention focused inward. Let your breath be just as steady as it was in your back bend. And exhale completely. One more breath, inhale. And then as we exhale, we're going to slowly bring the head back to center, kind of look up towards the sky. And then go ahead and inhale, bring those knees all the way up. And once more, give yourself a nice squeeze, a nice hug. If you like, you can lift your forehead towards the knee to kind of curl yourself up into a tight, tight little T. And then exhale, let's release. If you need to kind of move into the joints of the hips here or into the sacrum or find a space a little bit, you can also kind of rotate those knees in any direction that feels right for you. We're going to take it the other direction. So hugging the knees in as close to the body as you can, open the arms like a T once more, and then exhale, start to draw both knees over to the right this time. So for me, I like to get the knees, the legs to come down first. Again, if you want to use a block, you can place it underneath your knees or your thighs, or you can just let the legs come down and find stability there. And then now bring awareness to that left shoulder, opening that left arm to the left. It's possible that arm kind of hangs in midair and you're just kind of there. And again, maybe placing a block underneath that left arm if you need support or not. You know, you can let it hang. It feels good. Be with it. Relax the heels of the feet together. As you gaze over to the left, focus awareness into that left side of your body. Let go of the tension that happens. As we hold each asana, we create a sense of tension. And there's okay to have a little bit of tension to come into the posture. But once we release into it, let all of that go. So each exhale breath softens that left shoulder a little closer to the earth. If your elbows are lifted, try to relax that elbow down. Be with your body wherever it is. If possible, you may feel this more in your arms, your shoulders, than you do in your legs. So if you want to bring that hand down towards the hips, that's fine too. You don't have to keep it elevated. You can also have the palm up. All kinds of choices. Deep in your inhale breath. Slow down your exhale breath. Stay connected to the earth. Trying to bring that left ear down. Again, inhale deeply. And exhale completely. One more time, deep breath in. And slow breath out. And then with the next inhale breath, we'll slowly bring the head back to center. And then inhale, bring those legs back in. Use the core muscles. Keep your arms nice and foundational for you here. And then once more, give yourself a nice hug. Yay. Thank you, body, for allowing me to twist. 
for giving me the opportunity to move in these ways. And then slowly lower the legs down. Okay, so now I'm gonna give you guys the option to either deepen <laughs> your back bend by taking that block to the highest level, or if you have a yoga wheel at home, you can also use the yoga wheel. I'll demonstrate with the block first, and then I'll move to the yoga wheel. So same position as before, you wanna place the block at the highest level, tower position, um, at the same spot. So kind of above the ribs, kind of opening the rib cage and chest. And then for this one, most of us are gonna be better suited by bringing the hands, interlacing the hands, creating a little basket, and then dropping ourselves back, elbows out to the side, shoulders back, knees can stay bent, or uh, as before, you can extend your leg. So a lot deeper, creating a sense of lift and openness there with the block. If you wanna to go to one of the previous versions, you can always do that. Now, if you have a yoga wheel at home, then you're gonna use the same momentum with the yoga wheel, holding onto the yoga wheel, making sure that it's positioned in the right place so it doesn't slide from underneath you. Hands behind, and again, we find that same opening. The difference with the yoga wheel is you're able to push into your leg and allow your torso to go all the way back so the top of the head can come to the floor and the arms can at that point extend, the legs can extend, the thighs roll in, and you're kind of creating this arch with your entire body. So the, the nice thing about the yoga wheel is that you incorporate not just the upper back, but also the lower back, which we will do with the block in a moment. So you're welcome to stay in any variation of this movement of this positioning as you wish. Let's go back to the block. Most of us have blocks. All right. Let's stay here just a few more breaths, noticing and admiring how the body feels. And if you'd like to just simply take a sense of rest, maybe you come into a little modified Shavasana with a little bit of the lift in the chest, that is fine too. So you don't have to overdo it. You can do however, you can move into this however it fits in your body today. And remembering that the journey of backbending is exactly that, it's a journey. And it starts with one step at a time. There's no way we'll, any of us will be able to go into a deep, deep backbend from the first moment we try. It takes practice, it takes effort, it takes dedication and consistency. So if you're feeling maybe you can let your head go, bringing your hands in prayer, that can deepen your back bend here, creating a sense of openness through the throat. If you would have your legs extended and you're still using the block, you can also extend your arms, pull the shoulder blades back into their sockets, interlace the fingers, release the index fingers, and create a sense of openness in the front body. One more deep breath here. Inhale, wherever you are. Exhale completely. Slow down your breathing. Inhale. Whether you're on the wheel or you're on your block, go ahead and bring your hands back behind your head. Elbows out. Tuck the chin in a little bit. You can bend your knees, look towards your thighs. And then from here, again, we're gonna try to sit up. So holding onto the knees, inhale, pull yourself up towards the seated position. Round your back, forehead to the knees. Curl yourself under. Let the shoulders relax. Let all of that go. Good. So you're welcome to repeat the same uh, use of the yoga wheel as before. Or if you have the block, we're going to lay all the way onto the back. And in that same elevated tower position to the block or any one that we've already done, inhale, press the hips up and slide the block underneath the sacrum. So in the tower position for the uh, sacrum lift, we kind of create that same opening we can find in the yoga wheel. We just have to separate it. And we allow ourselves to kind of be here for a moment. The feet are planted on the floor. The glutes are relaxed, so don't tense through your glutes. Let your shoulder rest on the mat. So it is an inversion, what we're doing here. We're creating elevation through the hips so that the heart is above the head. That creates an inversion, right? Anytime the head is below the heart, it's considered an inversion. 
So you're welcome to stay in this kind of supported bridge pose. You can have the arms up overhead like you did before. And you're always welcome to straighten your legs. Now, one thing I suggest if you're straightening your legs, let them separate a little bit and relax your feet. Try not to straighten your legs like from your knees and your feet, but instead reach the heels or slide the heels away from you. Any point there's a tightness or a pinching in the lower back, you know that's a sign for you to bend your knees again and to plant your feet back on the floor to give you a little bit of support. Now, we're not using the legs to push up. We're just letting the feet be flat or extended either way. But you want to kind of keep that sense of softness as we open up through that front, the top of the hips, the front of the hip flexors. Okay. So find whatever position is comfortable for you, any variation that I've shown, or perhaps others that I haven't shown that you feel are right for your body today. Remember, this is your practice, not mine. So you do what you feel is best. As you softly settle into the difficulty, the challenge, allow your breath to deepen, your exhale to slow down. Your center of focus with your gaze is grounded either at the tip of the nose, at one spot in your room or with your eyes closed. Let go of the need to do more. Instead, find yourself exactly where you are and settle. Feel ease within the discomfort. How? How can we feel ease if everything is uncomfortable, if everything is a challenge and a struggle? How can we find ease within that? That's a question you need to figure out for yourself. Maybe it means really focusing on the breath. Maybe it means really focusing on lengthening the exhale. Maybe it means just allow yourself to be at ease. Is that a possibility? Do you give yourself permission to find ease within the struggle? Let's go one more deep breath in. Slow exhale breath out. With the next inhale, let's bring the arms down if they're up over the head. And if your legs are lengthened, let's go ahead and bend the knees, plant the feet back on the floor. From here, we'll go onto the toes once more. Tuck under to the pelvis, so engage the core. Bring the hips towards the rib cage. Lift and elevate the hips. Remove the block and come all the way down. Good. Once you're down, it should feel kind of nice once you're down. Bring the knees into the chest and give yourself one more time a nice hug. We're going to go into a happy baby here. And then we're going to take a resting posture. So open the knees wide, arms inside the legs. Grab the pinky toe sides of the feet. And if you have the pinky toe sides of the feet and you have a good grip, elevate the heels and let the chins become kind of perpendicular to the floor. <coughs> Relax the shoulders, and you can move your happy baby. You can roll it side to side. Good. Or you can be still. You can even roll forward and back if that feels better for you. Just check in with your body. What do you need to do today? What is needed for your body today? Let go of having to do anything. Just be. And ideally, you want to kind of pull those knees down towards the earth. One day, knees and thighs touching the earth on both sides. May take some time. Now, if you have a good grip on the soles of your feet, go ahead and grab your big toes. We'll get a good grip on your big toes. You're going to lock it in with your thumb. And then see if you can keep the knees in the same position, but try to straighten the legs. So this is we're going into like a wide-legged straddle. Then the elbows can kind of come to the sides. They act almost like weights to pull the legs down over both sides of the head. And then go ahead and point your toes. By pointing your toes, you're probably going to straighten your arms. That's fine. Keep the belly drawn in and keep the sacrum down. So don't lift the tailbone, that part that we placed the block on underneath us before. Keep that part of your body down towards the floor. And then maybe the chin tucks in a little bit. And once more, you can gaze to the tip of the nose, or you can look up to the sky, or you can close your eyes. Try to separate the legs a little wider as you settle the hips. And then exhale, bringing the legs together. 
all the way together. So your big toes touch, your fingers touch. Keeping the sacrum down, let's release the toes and let the legs kind of float up towards the sky, relax the arms down. So this is Viparita Karani, our legs up the wall. If you actually have a wall nearby, feel free to bring your legs to that wall so that you can rest them there. Or the other option is you can slide that block at its lowest level, also underneath your sacrum, and now it becomes a little bit of an inversion resting posture. So again, any variation that feels right for you is going to be what works for you today. And so then imagine your legs are two big hot air balloons floating up in the air. Relax them. Let them float. Let them separate, kind of, and come back together. Or maybe scissor a little bit forward and back. If you find that your legs are way too close to your body, then see if you can move them away from the body or vice versa. If your legs are too far extended, you can actually create tension in the abdomen. You have to use your core to keep them back in center. So gently bring them back up. You want the legs to be as perpendicular to the earth as possible. That's gonna be the most gentle position for them as you rest your back. If you have the, the block underneath your sacrum, then it gives you a little bit more space. But you can always do this with nothing, just the, the tailbone down on the floor. Relax your arms and shoulders and start to come into a sense of ease, letting go the whole journey of back bend that we've been through. One more deep breath, inhale. And exhale completely. Good. And gently, we're going to bend the knees, slowly lowering the heels down towards the body, letting the toes float. Going to just hang there for a moment. Knees are pointing up towards the ceiling, and your feet are kind of floating down. And you start to notice perhaps there's some tingling in the feet, some sensation happening with the feet, just the blood rushing back from the opposite direction. So that's totally normal. When you're ready, lower the feet all the way down to the floor. And if you had placed the block underneath the sacrum, just remove it out of the way. And once more, bring the knees into the chest. Give yourself a nice hug, maybe forehead to the knees. Squeeze yourself into a tight, tight little seat. We'll do one more twist here before finding our Shavasana. So separate the feet about hip width apart, knees. Shoulder knees up, uh, also hip width apart. So your feet are about as wide as your mat, maybe even wider than hip width. Open the arms like a T, palms down if possible, and then drop both knees to the left. So your feet are apart as, as part as your mat. Your feet are not together like they were before. And if it's okay for you, if you feel all right, your left foot can kind of slide up on top of your right thigh and then give it a little extra pull, let's say, towards the left side. You want your right knee to come down towards the floor. That left knee can stay hovering, that's fine. But try to feel this on that right side of your leg or right side of your hip, a little bit more than you do on the left side. And then again, if there's any pain in the knees, that means that's the stop sign, that is a stop light for your body. Please readjust so that you don't feel pain in your knees. And just stay here, stable and steady. Exhale completely. Back to that same rhythmic movement of breath. It's what connects our whole practice together. Back to that last exhale. If your left foot is on top of the right thigh, release it, let it come back down. And then inhale, come back to center. Before we do the other side, just windshield wipe your legs a little bit, rocking them side to side, separating the feet and the knees. Make sure you don't have any stuff around you when you bring your knees to the side. So exhale, dropping both knees to the right. So that left knee is on the inside and you start to feel a little bit more happening in the inner left hip. If it feels okay, that right foot can go on top of the left thigh, not the knee, but the thigh. As we pull, using the weight of the right leg, pull the left knee down towards the floor. 
arms can be out like a T. And I like to keep my gaze up in this one. I don't like to turn my head as much in this one just because it feels a little bit more, you know, out of balance when I do that. But play with it, see where you would prefer to have your head position. And then just let it go. Let yourself be here. If the left knee doesn't quite touch the floor, that's totally okay. It doesn't have to. It does feel a little nicer once the left knee is down because then now you feel the support of the earth below you. Until then, it's just going to feel like you're pulling or you're creating a sense of pull or lengthening through that left hip flexor. Breathe into it. And once more, remember, please, if there's any sharp pain, you come out, you readjust, you find the right position, and you try again. Or you don't. But always listening to your body is the best thing you can do during your practice. Soften your inhales, make them deep. Soften your exhales, make them long and steady, like a little hole got poked into a balloon and all the air is coming out. One more breath in. And slow breath out. Good. If your right foot is on top of that left thigh, we're going to release the right foot back down to the floor. And then inhale, bring both legs back to center. And once more, just windshield wipe, dropping the head, one, the legs one direction and then the other. And then last time, hugging those knees into the chest. Give yourself a nice tight squeeze. Forehead to the knees if that's comfortable. Shoulders roll back and down. Feel this in your whole entire body. You can move and sway, or you can be still. And then exhale, let the legs go, let the head come back down, and let's take our Shavasana. Legs extended, toes flop out to the sides, arms down by your sides, palms facing up. Check in with your body here. Notice, is, do you feel a little bit more open in that front body? Does it still feel like you're back bending? Can you start to see if you can let that come back to a center or equanimous state where you feel a little bit more even? The back body and the front body, a little bit more even between the left and the right sides of your body. A little bit more even between the extremities of your toes and fingers and the top of the head. Relax the legs, the hips. Relax the thighs and the glutes. Relax every muscle, every joint, every ligament. Soften the jaw, take a swallow, let the tongue go limp in the back of the throat. Take breath. And gently begin to bring awareness back to this body, this room, this next cycle of breath. Begin to wiggle the fingers and the toes, the hands, wrists, the feet and ankles. Maybe bend the knees and come to a constructive rest position with the feet apart, 
the knees pressing or sliding towards each other. One hand at the belly and one hand at the heart. We'll be here for a few more breaths. Almost feel like your knees are hanging on, on a floating hanger and your legs are completely relaxed here. And with the next exhale, let's go ahead and roll over onto the side. It doesn't matter which side, could be your left or your right side. You can use your bottom arm like a pillow, or you can just kind of lay your head onto the mat. And I invite you to remain with your eyes closed for the rest of our practice today. With the next inhale breath, let's go ahead and press ourselves up to come to a comfortable upright seated position. Take your time, there's no rush. So as we make our way up to seated, again, soften your gaze or close your eyes. Let your hands rest at your lap or on your knees, wherever it's comfortable for you. Soften the shoulders and jaw once more. Observe. Again, this step-by-step -step journey into backbending can sometimes be a little tedious, unwelcomed, <laughs> difficult, joyful. It can give you a sense of expansiveness, but it can also humble you. However your practice went today, it was exactly how it was meant to. However deep or not so deep, you were able to find these supported postures into backbending. It's exactly what you needed today. So with a sense of gratitude, let's bring our palms together at the center of the heart and we'll seal our practice and the benefits of our practice. So for those around us, we're halfway around the world, for those people we'll never meet, let them reap the benefits of our dedication. Inhale to begin. Thank mm -hmm. you. 